and to Think Tech's 2022 Annual Awards Program. This year, this year, we welcome you in two ways, in person for some and virtually for others. They're out there. They're out there watching. Okay, be careful. Okay? And thank you for being here. I say that to everybody. Our only Aloha this evening will be by Kalihi Akita, member of OHA, president of Grassroot Institute, longtime host and friend on Think Tech Hawaii. I give you Kalihi Akita. Thank you, Jay, for that warm introduction. And everybody, Aloha. I can't tell you how very proud I am to be a member of the Think Tech Hawaii family. I've been associated with Jay Fidel and Carol Bon Lee for about a couple decades. Here in Hawaii, we welcome people with an oli, a chant. And this oli is special because it was designed to welcome people from anywhere and everywhere, which is really what we do in Think Tech. I want to simply go back with you hundreds of years. This is what you would hear if you arrived on the shores of Hawaii. And the most important word is aloha. Oh, now, 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 once more aloha welcome to think text annual holiday celebration aloha If you weren't watching, 2022 was a very interesting year. And I, I think I mean that in the, uh, in the Chinese sense or maybe in the Dickensian sense. But it was a very productive year for Think Tech. And for many of us, it was also a challenging year in, in terms of our production. So our first order of business is to take a look back. And we made a short video, Haley Ikeda did it, uh, of our year in review. As we say, it was a year of impact. Watch this. Impact. Okay, now we're going to talk about our keynote. Our keynote is uh, Susie Beres Lam. 
Uh, she's the president of the East-West Center. She's a retired three-star Army general. I want appropriate respect and salutes on that. Um, and she's the center's first woman and Native Hawaiian to lead the organization. She's been a great guest on ThinkTech. Please give her a warm welcome, President, General, ThinkTech guest and friend, Susie Punani Varizla. What an honor it is to be here with creators, thinkers, part of this think tech who help to advance knowledge, not just in Hawaii, but obviously internationally, much like the East West Center. I'm so proud to be here today with many friends that I see and new friends that I hope we get to know each other more. And I'm so um, really want to congratulate the awardees because now I'm going to go have to go back and look at some of the creations that you've made. I'm honored to be here along with my colleagues, you know, Derek, Barar, who, by the way, we're all connected because we were in college together. And while we were in college, our board of governors, Governor Wahei, was our governor. But that we, we just graduated a little while ago. It wasn't that long ago. No. But, um, you know, the East West Center's mission, and I'm so excited that we, I, I came a little late, and I apologize if I get to mix with you, because we had our APEC uh, informal senior leaders meeting that started yesterday on December 7th. Very fitting this week, as we look at, we were able to share that, you know, as we reflect on that Remembrance Day, that we know full well, as many of us here, the cost of war. So having organizations, like the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation to bring people together to look at ways that we can build capacity, security through economic viability, prosperity for us all. And so I, I was just with them at the Hali Kulani and they are all mixing just fine and talking and they love Hawaii. Yesterday we set the foundation of who we are. We brought this aloha spirit that we feel in the room that you push through that video screen um, that, and they feel it. And they said, there's just, there is something about this place. That is the first meeting of a series of meetings that the United States will have before they have the leaders meeting in the fall in San Francisco. Of course, Hawaii was on the list, but it's so fitting that we would be the first ones since 2011 to be able to do that. And um, so um, I'm grateful to be able to share with you because our mission at the East West Center is very similar. You might not believe it, but I'll share a little bit with you that in 1960, when Eisenhower signed the authorization of the establishment of the East-West Center, ushered in by then Senator Lyndon Johnson, who became President Lyndon Johnson, along with Governor Burns, the state of Hawaii, you know, obviously the impact of the World War II and into a Cold War, that there needed to be a place where we could build understanding among people and nations. And it was decided through cooperative research dialogue and education, which is much of what you're, you all do, that through this virtual means that we can connect people around the world. And that map was pretty stunning. And we need to do one of those. We'll, we'll get that in our annual report, Governor. I, I think that's a great idea. On the people that we touch around the world, because really East-West Centers had 68,000 over alumni from around the world. This model was designed that we'd have American students, Asian students and Pacific students all living together. And it's not the University of Hawaii campus, Jody. Yes, thank you, Jody knows this on the University of Hawaii campus. But we are adjacent, partnering with the University of Hawaii. We're congressionally funded about 80% of other philanthropic donors who provide scholarships for international students also fund the East West Center. But this design is unique. And it was decided that Hawaii would be that place because Hawaii not just because of its geographic location, but also because of the multicultural nature. We just need to look at this room uh, and the experiences that we have here in Hawaii, as well as our own, and we heard the Oli and the beginning before we started, the Kanakama Oli, the Native Hawaiian culture that ushers in this idea of aloha. And we shared a lot of that at APEC yesterday. And even the, the director uh, of the APEC secretariat said that this is the first time when she heard uh, John DeFries from our Hawaii Tourism Authority said, 
you know, that sometimes responsibility finds you, your kuleana finds you. And for these people who work just like you, work every day to try to improve knowledge and you wonder why, why am I doing this, right? Why, why, why do I have to do this? But maybe it's because it is your kuleana and maybe you didn't look for it, but it found you. And that really spoke to me because sometimes we're on a journey and, and we don't understand why, but if we're connected with our aina, our place, and our culture and our people, that maybe we were chosen. Maybe you were chosen. And clearly our awardees today were chosen because you listened to that calling when your kuleana came to you and you said, what if, what if we did a program on this? What if we talked about this? Because it found you and you listened to that call and you answered that call and you shared that call with everyone else. So I am so grateful. And I'm grateful that I'm a place where the um, Governor Waihe is on our board and Derek, we answered the call to try to promote those better relations. You know, we, we embarked on a strategic plan and it was very exciting. I started in January at the East West Center and we brought together the board, including the governor. It's a wonderful board because it's diverse. We have Pompeo Trump appointees from the State Department. We have Hawaii Democrats, and we have international partners of this 18 board, 18 member board. And I thought, actually, brought in a prayer and a holy because I thought, how are we going to come together with a vision and priorities that we all agree on? Fortunately, we had great leadership, uh, like the governor here. We came together and agreed that the vision of the East West Center should be a place here in Hawaii, where it's a premier institution from the, for the Indo-Pacific that develops and equips leaders to face and solve those challenges of common concern in five different areas. We believe that the legacy of the East-West Center has been its built leaders through education, much like what you do. You might do it indirectly, and you don't always see the fruits of it. You see the fruits of it long-term. It's a long-term investment, what you're doing, what we're doing. Because later on in life, we've seen just in the Pacific alone, five heads of state who come from the East-West Center as East-West Center fellows. Of course, one of the most famous that I like, spoke to the APEC team or the senior leaders, of course, was President Obama's mother, who was a fellow, as well as her, um, his stepfather from Indonesia, where they met on the second floor of Burns Hall where I work. <laughs> and and where President Obama used to come in the garden, so of course, they all went out to the garden. Did he? Play here. Wow, it's a good picture. And his mother's memorial service was there. That's how meaningful that place and space was and is to him. But you know, it's that um, the leaders that we've had. We've had five heads of state from the Pacific alone. Like I said, um, when I went to meet alumni, whether in Tokyo, Okinawa, since I started this position, Fiji, Palau, Guam, Washington D.C., New York City. Many came from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 2000s, and current, and they all said that the East-West Center and Hawaii helped to shape their lives, and they made a difference. They went on to do things. They listened to the call, because Kuliana found them, just like you. And the second thing is that we convene impactful dialogues. This past year, just like you, convened, so a lot of similarities here, we convened them there at the East-West Center, but also around the world, like you touch the world through the virtual space. We also go out to the world pre-COVID and now post-COVID. We are actually going in person around the globe, which is really exciting. Having conversations like bringing together Kashmiri, Indian, Pakistani journalists together in Nepal, something that most people wouldn't do. Having the International Media Conference with Maria Ressa this past summer with over 300 journalists um, who are East-West Center fellows or alumni from 35 different countries. Having Maria Ressa share about uh, her challenges as a journalist and her uh, fight to have free and open independent media. And on that day she spoke to us was the day that they told her Rappler.com needed to come down, which is pretty amazing. And in the audience she shared, we had a Meta senior leader from Facebook, Meta Facebook, um, in the audience and she shared about how Information now for journalists, it's before you were able to decide the content and distribution somewhat. 
but now distribution is out of your hand and even content could be reshaped in different ways, which makes places and, and, and formats like ThinkTech important because it provides an alternative. It provides another venue so that factual information can receive, public can receive that information. And she said, and I just want to share with you because I thought it was fascinating, he's sitting in the audience and she's standing there and she says, you know, there have been improvements to the social media, but you know, it's been hell for the information space, for factual information. And Meta has said they've made some improvements, but when you're in hell and make a few improvements, you're still in hell. So I thought, you know, he sat there and just like East West Center convening, we give two sides of the story. So the next day he was allowed to give his, his case on what they're trying to do uh, to improve, improve the social media process. But then of course an Indian journalist got up and said, so can you tell us, Meta, why is it that um, um, you give the names of certain journalists to the government after they post certain items on, on Facebook? Well, we have to follow the laws of the land wherever we are present. So there was the answer there, right? So that's another challenge. Very interesting. So we convene impactful dialogues. We also looked at the spotlight on the Pacific because of climate change and, of course, the geopolitical strategic competition that's happening in the Pacific and the needs of the Pacific. We're going to start to see challenges to climate in the Pacific first rising sea levels, challenges to our uh, biodiversity of our oceans and its impact on food and water security as well as uh, migration. And we're seeing some of those impacts already here in Hawaii. And of course, the fourth and fifth area are fostering environmental solutions and supporting good governance, which is what they're talking about this week at APEC ISOM, is really fostering sustainable economic development and growth as well as good governance. You know, we see the rise of authoritarian regimes and the, and the challenges to our free and open press. East West Center for 50 years has been committed to promoting relationships among journalists for 50 years and then, and then challenging some of the, the, the connections. You know, I, when, when Derek and I were in school at UH, we actually had a lot of Chinese journalists that would come into our classes to look at uh, balance reporting. Now, because of the geopolitical situation, we see less of that. However, we do have Chinese students in our in our um, dorms and in our programs, but we're looking at ways that we can do this more creatively, much the, like the creative ways that you have. Um, can we bring journalists together who talk about culture and the arts, non-contentious space, so that you keep the dialogue going? So we do have a funder who said, I only want to fund U.S. Chinese journalists so we're looking at creative ways that we can do that and super excited. So those are our priorities, which I think are yours. You're always looking for great stories. I remember how we can connect the contentious areas. When I was still in uniform, we did some stories Are you invited us to talk about what we're doing on the training area, what we're doing with Red Hill, what we're doing. So you, didn't, you weren't afraid to touch on those things that the public needed to hear. So um, I know that you'll continue to do that with these amazing leaders. I mean, I, I feel like, you know, the time that you take to do this for our community, you truly are servants of the community. So thank you for your selfless service and what you do for our community. And I'm honored to be here and to see you receive your awards. So thank you so much, Jay, I appreciate it. Let's talk about our community service awards every year. We have the pleasure of rec recognizing organizations and individuals of merit who have made notable contributions to our community, our society, and our collective well-being. Our community service awards sometimes honor those who are not necessarily in the news, but who nevertheless provide noteworthy value, stories, and focus to our community on the issues and events we care about. Today, we're going to present three such awards. So let's meet the recipients. Our first 2022 Community Award. It's you! <laughs> <laughs> Goes to CompuGirls Hawaii, part of the National CompuGirls Organization. 
dedicated to encouraging young women to learn information technology and cybersecurity skills. Very important to the nation and to Hawaii. Let me read part of the citation. We are presenting a Think Tech Hawaii Community Service Award to CompuGirls Hawaii, a Hawaii nonprofit that is part of the National CompuGirls Organization, managed by its executive director, Whitney Aragaki. I have proof. The work of CompuGirls Hawaii in helping young women learn about and become competent at cutting edge computer equipment, information technology, and cybersecurity has been of great value to them as future participants in our workforce and to the future of Hawaii. This is especially important in our efforts to recover from the challenges of COVID. Um, you have helped Hawaii train a generation of skilled workers, keeping our graduates home and making Hawaii a better place in the global competition and in the Pacific region too. <laughs> Representing Country Girls, Country Girls Hawaii is its executive director, Whitney Aragaki. <clears throat> Whitney Aragaki, will you accept and acknowledge <laughs> this award on behalf of Country Girls Hawaii? <laughs> How about taking a minute to give us your response to this proposal we have made to you and your thoughts? Mahalo, Jay. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. Coffee Girls Hawaii is in partnership with the University of Hawaii at Manoa, Cyber Hawaii, and um, Arizona State University Center for Gender Equity in Science and Technology. So we are so appreciative of all the contributions from nonprofit as well as um, higher education to support our students. We've been working with students from grades 6 through 12 in teaching about cybersecurity. Currently, I feel like it's my charge to teach about this because cybersecurity will be the next level prevention of gendered violence for our women and non-binary individuals. Um, the world is so digital now, and digital and analog identities are so intertwined that it's so important for our girls to be taught about how to protect themselves online and then become active users and creators in this cyberspace. So just imagine what it would look like. You know, we have 50, uh, 50 students that went through our programs this summer from across the islands. We've worked with students from Kimo and Kona, <laughs> all over, all the way up to Kauai, and so, and all the way in between. And just imagine what it looks like if every student, if every girl and non-binary student got the opportunity to work in cybersecurity for Hawaii. Mahalo nui for the opportunity. Our next uh, 2022 Community Service Award goes to Project Expedite Justice, which you may or may not have heard about, but you're hearing about it today. PEJ is the most remarkable organization operating out of Kona and helping the victims of war crimes, atrocities, <laughs> I wasn't kidding, um, and violations of human rights around the world. And I should include genocide in that. This is important, and Hawaii is actually involved. This organization is based in Hawaii. Let me uh, read a part of the citation. So we present a Think Tech Hawaii Community Service Award to Project Expedite Justice, a global nonprofit uh, founded and led by Executive Director Cynthia Tai. Wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Operating on the big house, out of Kona. And she came here tonight to accept her award. <laughs> The courageous work that Project Expedite Justice has done, and we know this because they have been on our uh, lineup, our talk show lineup, many, many times from many, many places in the world, including a number of shows from Ukraine, um, has done in its investigation and prosecution of war crimes, atrocities, and other human rights violations has been of extraordinary value to the global community just as the revelations that your guests on our shows have reported on our transitional justice talk show. They've been of enormous value, raise awareness, including right here tonight, uh, everywhere among our viewers. So your work in providing support to other NGO organizations, governments and commissions, including truth commissions, uh, who are investigating and prosecuting war crimes, atrocities and violations 
of human rights in advancing justice in troubled and violent areas, and there are plenty of them, and in raising the funding necessary to do that has been notable and impressive. So representing PEJ, Project Expedite Justice, is its founder and executive director, Cynthia Tai, right here. Uh, Cynthia Tai, will you accept and acknowledge this award I on will. behalf of Pro <laughs> <laughs> Project Expedite Justice? Now, how about taking a minute to give us your response and your thoughts, okay? So first of all, I wanted to thank uh, notably Carol and Jay and Haley for their amazing work in putting together such, such a wonderful um, cast of, of leaders in Hawaii. Um, it's an honor to accept this award on behalf of Project Expedite Justice, and as Jay stated, while we are founded uh, locally, we act globally. Our area of expertise lies in the areas of war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. And as Jay noted, there are plenty of troubled areas. At presently, PEJ, six years into its existence, works in five countries. I'm sure most of you know that this year and for the foreseeable future, the world has been profoundly changed by the Russian Federation's attack on Ukraine. We at Project Expedite Justice are honored and privileged to launch our Ukraine project this year to support the Ukrainian government, its prosecutor general's office, um, and all civil society actors who are um, for the first time in history, documenting as the war um, is evolving. It's very difficult, the landscape changes all the time, and tomorrow my team heads to Capitol. This award is mostly about them. And I wanna say, I'm gonna start to cry, sorry. Um, it's really about my Ukrainian colleagues and watching them, their commitment, their just their, their steadfast commitment to their future for their own children and for Ukraine. They do it selflessly. They don't complain. They show up every day waiting for the next job. And their biggest complaint about me is why aren't you giving me more work? Which is something that we don't really hear about a lot to, in our world today. They are honestly grateful. So it's with Elisa, Demetrio, Max, and Bogdan in mind that um, I'm very grateful. Thank you. Will uh, John Waihe, can, can we call upon you? I'll tell you why. Because the next award is to CJ. And um, uh, could you be CJ to accept this award, <laughs> this award on behalf of CJ? Would that be appropriate? CJ Mark Rectenwald. Rectenwald, yeah. I got a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> you get four stars, General, well, no time. <laughs> if Susie Barris Lum could get a promotion, so can you. Why not? <laughs> she deserves it, buddy. <laughs> So our next 2020 New Community Service Award uh, goes to Mark Rechtenwall, Chief Justice of the Hawaii Supreme Court. I'm going to read part of the citation. We present a Think Tech Hawaii Community Service Award uh, to Mark Rechtenwall, Chief Justice of the Hawaii Supreme Court. Your work in dealing with the complex challenges presented by the COVID, the COVID pandemic over the past three years and the transitional issues involved in shifting from courtroom to virtual proceedings, and then back again to keep the wheels of justice moving has been a remarkable and impressive. However stressful the circumstances, you have maintained your good nature and the high morale of the judiciary and the bar, which isn't easy. Even in the face of the COVID, the COVID pandemic, you have continued your very important access to, to justice program, as well as your statewide infrastructure projects and thus you have maintained public confidence, all important public confidence in our courts and our government. Um, so although the CJ isn't here, we have somebody who looks like him, <laughs> <laughs> namely former Governor John Wyhey. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> Governor, Governor Wyhey, do you accept this award on behalf of Chief Justice Mark Rechtenwald? 
I do. <laughs> and the last time I said that, it was for life. <laughs> We are also presenting ThinkTech Family Awards to one ThinkTech talk show series, two ThinkTech hosts, and a ThinkTech underwriter, all of whom represent the best of our ThinkTech work and family over the past year. We wish we could honor and inherently do honor all our volunteer hosts and all their shows, as well as all of our cherished underwriters. So here's our first 2022 ThinkTech Family Award and it goes to the show of the year. This year, we proudly present that award to a nation of immigrants hosted by Chong Wang, an immigrant from China, who is now a practicing lawyer in Minneapolis. We present a Think Tech Talk Show of the Year Award to a nation of immigrants, a talk show covering immigration and immigrants in the United States, hosted by Chong Wang of Minneapolis, Minnesota. The show's coverage of these subjects reveals that we do live in a nation of immigrants, not only in Hawaii, but in so many places on the mainland, and that the diversity of our country resulting from the diversity of our immigrants is our greatest strength and increasingly important to our productivity, our vitality, and our future in the global community. The quality of the show is notable, impressive, and successful. Chung Wang is joining us virtually from Minneapolis. There he is. Chang Wang, will you accept and acknowledge this award for a nation of immigrants? Yes, thank you. Can you please give us a few minutes of your thoughts? Aloha, Sig Tang Hawaii, Jay, Carol, distinguished guests, fellow awardees, friends. Sorry I can't be with you in person today. We have been busy with snow shoveling in Minnesota. <laughs> 22 years ago, I came to America with a dream. Today, America is my home. We start a nation of immigrants with this famous quote, anyone from any corner of the earth can come to America and become come an American. We have heard this program features the lives of immigrants, knowledge, diversity, and inclusion. We have heard stories from Chinese, Japanese, Hmong, British, Indian, Cambodian, Austrian, Italian, Pudanese, Ukrainian, Lao, Scottish Irish, Jewish, Lebanese, Persian, Canadian, Americans. The list goes on reminding us that we can define America in one word, possibilities. We listen to their stories, celebrate their contributions to the fabric of American life. The work goes on, the hope still lives, and the dream shall never die. This award and this show are dedicated to all immigrants, all citizens of our country, the land of the free. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chang, for joining us from Minneapolis. Next, we are presenting two hosts of the Year Awards this evening. Our first host of the Year Award goes to Christine Linders, host of the show Physical Therapy for a Better Life. Let me read part of the citation. We present a Think Tech Host of the Year Award to Christine Linders, host of our popular lifestyle talk show, Physical Therapy for a Better Life. The show is practical and helpful in that you not only educate us, about the anatomical concepts of physical therapy, but that you also personally demonstrate physical therapy tips and techniques, thus making the show and the lessons you provide all the more useful. You have an ability to connect with your audience in a warm and engaging manner while conveying this valuable information. The coverage and content you offer is therefore notable, impressive, and successful. Christine Linders is here. Christine, will you accept and acknowledge this award? <laughs> How about taking a minute to give us your thoughts? Thank you so much. This is um, most unexpected and appreciated. And I also am emotional because my brother surprised me. He flew from New York today and just arrived after having his appendix out. So I've been worried about him and then he walks in today. So thank you all physical therapy for a better life. And life is better when you listen to your physical therapist. That is a quote that my dad said 
before he passed to me and it's become my slogan. I end every show with it. And I tell people when they leave the office often, life is better when you listen to your physical therapist. And what that means is I want people to feel better. I want people to move better. I want you to know that there's something that you can do to feel better. And I came to Hawaii four years ago and I had a mission. I wanted greater impact. And I met my dear friend, Catherine Knorr, and I said, I want to get on TV. And she went, oh, I have an idea, let me make a phone call. And she called Jay, and the next thing I know, I was getting interviewed on this amazing platform that I had no idea about, Think Tech Hawaii, which all of you are such an amazing part of worldwide. And I talked to Jay, he interviewed me twice because I was tentative, but I wanted it and I was nervous. And we talked about my show. It might be a little bit different. I might be the ghost and, and, and I mean, the guest and the host. I would have a patient. We would explain to people what to do. And thank you for taking a chance on me. And thank you to Jay and Carol and Haley and Eric and Michael and everyone behind the scenes that has helped me to grow and learn and to get to where I am today. This is such an honor. And it's been an honor to be a part of Things Like Hawaii. All the sponsors and donors that let us be here today. Thank you so much. I am so grateful. Thank you. <laughs> our second host of the year award goes to Chuck Crumpton, host of not one, but two of our talk shows. Let me read part of the citation. We present a Think Tech Hawaii host of the year award to Chuck Crumpton, host of two national issues in our lineup, the rule of law and the new abnormal, and it's time for responsible change. You're also a frequent guest and contributor on our American Issues Take One and Take Two shows. The coverage of your two shows has been highly consistent over the years, and your expert guests from all over the country are candid and often passionate uh, in their conversations that cover political and legal sea changes, which we need to know about. Your thoughtful citizen journalism and high-level content on these shows have been extremely valuable to our viewership, given the difficulty and danger of the times. Chuck is here, Chuck Crumpton. Chuck, will you accept and acknowledge this award? How about taking a minute to give us your talk, your thought? Okay, so for everybody who's familiar with Think Tech, this is not an individual award. We all know that. It really honors three groups of people at least. First is the Think Tech team, Jay, Carol, Haley, Michael, Eric, the whole group, they're fantastic. Without them, <clears throat> there would be nothing coming out of the kitchen. <clears throat> Second is the incredible panelists from all over the country. We've had law school deans here and across the country. <clears throat> we've had David, we've had Doug Chin, we've had Jeff Portnoy, Sandra Sims, uh, many people locally. And third, most important of all, every single co-host and panelist who has contributed to make ThinkTech what it is. It takes a village, and this is one hell of a village. Thank you. Our last ThinkTech Family Award is to our underwriter of the year, Michael Sklarz. We're deeply grateful to Mike, who has been an unflagging underwriter and supporter of ThinkTech for many, many years. Contributions from underwriters like Mike cover the largest part of our budget, and we would not be here celebrating our 22nd anniversary without his long-standing and continuing generosity and encouragement. Let me read part of the citation. We present our ThinkTech Hawaii Underwriter of the Year Award to Michael Sklarz. This award expresses our special recognition and appreciation of your longtime generous and continuing support of our efforts at ThinkTech. The underwriter contributions you have provided over the years since 2016 have kept us going and have enabled us to develop our platform for engagement and our content for public awareness. And we are very grateful to you. Michael is here. Michael Sklarz, will you accept and acknowledge this award? Yes. How about taking a minute to give us your thoughts? Work. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, I was telling Jay uh, that uh, when he called me to say I was going to give this award, I, I said, okay, I've never gotten an award before, so I wouldn't know this for anything. <laughs> <laughs> and um, 
you guys probably don't know Jay and I are cousins. So um, he's a very persuasive guy. When he and Carol came to ask me to be a sponsor, I didn't really have a choice. So. <laughs> But no, I'm, I'm delighted to be a sponsor. It's a wonderful organization. It's really, really intelligent and insightful programming. And I really think it's a wonderful service. And just really happy to be a part of it. So thank you. Thank you, Mike. In addition, this year we've started another awards program, highlighting what we call our distinguished guests. Each month we ask our Think Tech hosts to nominate a slate of outstanding guests from their shows and then we put those nominations out for voting by our viewership. So far this year, we're proud to announce that the following individuals have won these distinguished guest elections. Alan Brennert, Anthony Crisco, Teresa Wee, Colin Moore, Kendam Giebach, David Larson, J.K. Lynn, Cyber Bunny, and Brandon Loresco. Congratulations now to all of our 2022 Community Service Award winners, Think Tech Family Award winners, and our distinguished guests. Please give a round of applause to all of our winners. Thank you. When I tell you about the state of the nation, actually, it's the state of the station. You've heard of the state of the nation. You've heard of the state of the state. This is the state of the station. Say that 10 times fast, never mind. Yes, we live in interesting and also frightening times, making it all the more important that think that covers all we can. Now, Carl and I work free, always, because we're dedicated to providing a platform for what we call civic engagement by citizen journalists, and that's, that's our mission, our dedication. We believe that everyone needs to do something to help, especially now. And that's what drives us, so we do what we can. And our guests and hosts are in the same ballgame. We do 30 talk shows a week, and monthly webinars. We do 60 hosts and thousands of guests in a year. Our shows and our technology, better than ever, we're always making it better, like every day the staff will tell you. <clears throat> and this past year, we have connected with more hosts and guests from more places in the world, including Cynthia Ties places in far away and troubled areas in, in uh, Ukraine, in Africa, in Latin America, everywhere. And we talk to them live. Um, we connect with them on Zoom. Okay. Our station manager, we're, uh, we're very uh, happy to have a highly committed staff. We're very proud of them. Our station manager, Michael Pangolinen. Thank you. Okay, good. 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 And there he is. <clears throat> Our production manager, Haley Ikeda. Woohoo! Our administrative manager, Maria Savio. Uh, all great people. They all do such work. And um, <clears throat> let me thank them. And we thank our hosts, guests, and viewers, and our directors, underwriters, like Mike, uh, supporters and friends for their participation, their encouragement, which is very important to us, uh, their validation, if you will, and their help. So there's a picture of our underwriters. And there's a picture of our directors, some of whom are here tonight. Um, and there's our hosts. You can see there's quite a few of them. Special thanks to our program sponsor, uh, Clay Chapman, Iwamura, Police, and Ravel, and to Brian Moore, um, and our friends here at Pacific Guardian Center for providing this great venue. They have been very, very kind to us, especially uh, in connection tonight with the parking. So that's really nice. Okay, uh, it has been a challenging year for the country, as I said, and for Hawaii, and the world for that matter. We look forward to better times in 2023, but we have to keep our eye on the ball. We have to connect the dots. We have to remember and uh, synthesize the events around us. We wish you and yours the best for this holiday season and for the new year, whatever it brings. Um, thanks for sharing the special occasion with us. We are recording this event. And we'll play it again on our website, thinktechwhite.com, and our social media, including, uh, you know, YouTube and Vimeo, and uh, our community uh, TV platform, in including uh, Olelo. See it again, just sign up on thinktechwhite.com if you haven't already, and you can see it in all our other content, which is incredible at this point. We've been doing this for mm, 12 years, 
uh, building a, a library, and we now have something in the order of 17,000 talk show videos on there. Okay? <laughs> okay, aloha to you all. All the best to you all. We really mean that. Ahui ho. Thank you.